Hello and welcome to this video in which we will perform an ad hoc analysis of a ladder network. Before we actually do the analysis, I need to uh, say a little bit about what we mean by ad hoc analysis. The idea is an ad hoc analysis is not bad or second class. Sometimes uh, when one hears the word ad hoc, they think of something that is inferior to something that's more structured. And we're not talking about that at all. Basically, what we are talking about is looking at a circuit and applying appropriate techniques to find voltages or currents or equivalent resistances or so on. Um, and these techniques uh, are techniques that have been talked about in previous videos, uh, things like the voltage divider, current divider. Um, uh, my mind just went blank. I'm sure we've talked about other things too. Uh, equivalent resistances, uh, and so on. And the idea is that we look at a circuit and determine how we will apply these to solve the circuit. It's one of those things that's actually very useful to know because there will be many situations where a simple ad hoc analysis will tell you what you need to know. The alternative to ad hoc analysis is to use a systematic approach such as nodal analysis or mesh analysis. Uh, these approaches are systematic in the sense that you follow one process through and by the time you're done you've got the analysis that you need. Um, and so they can be programmed into a computer. They're also oftentimes much more elaborate than what you really need to solve a circuit in a given situation. So with that introduction then, uh, let's proceed to the ad hoc analysis of a ladder network. Okay, I've drawn here a ladder network and um, my goal is to find the voltage V1 across this resistor V2 and V3. So I'd like to know all of those voltages. Uh, I might also want to know, for example, the current that the source has to supply to this ladder network. So what I'm going to do is use appropriate analysis techniques to, um, to uh, find these voltages in this current. Now for this particular circuit, uh, if you look at it, there's no obvious ways here that we could apply, say, a voltage divider to find V1 or V2 or V3. Um, there's no obvious uh, techniques that have already been talked about that um, we should use. So what we'll do, well, one thing we can do is we can find equivalent resistances. And uh, there's actually a whole video where the equivalent resistance of a, a ladder network is found. And we can use those same, that, that same technique of finding equivalent resistances to find the voltages that we want. In fact, what we'll do is we'll use, or we'll use equivalent resistance to find V1 first. Once we found V1, then we can go back to a second equivalent resistance that we will have already computed to find V2. And once we've done that, we can find V3. All of those, well, V2 and V3, actually V1, will all be found using a simple application of the voltage divider. So the first step in, in doing this is to basically just compute the um, equivalent resistances of the network until I get to the point where I have a 10 volt source, where I have this 10 volt source, and I have it connected to two resistors and I can use that to find V1. Now, in I'll do this quickly. If you have questions about how this is done and would like a much more detailed presentation of it, I would refer you to the video that actually does the equivalent resistance analysis of the ladder network. I'm not going to write a lot on my original, on this nice yellow schematic, because I will want to go back to it uh, when we're done finding um, uh, V1, and I'll want to look back at the schematic to uh, find V2 and V3. So the first thing I'll do is I'll combine these two 1K ohm resistors because they're in series. When I do that, I'll get a 2K ohm resistance which is then in parallel with this 2K ohm resistance. So the 1K ohm and 1K ohm in series 
that combination in parallel with the 2K ohm resistor gives me an equivalent resistance for these three resistors of 1K ohm. So what I'm going to do is redraw my entire circuit and you're thinking this looks like a lot of work and in some ways it can be but it's not that bad and I'm going to do it with the three resistors combined into a single 1k ohm resistor okay so this is the one that I've just uh, computed now this is still my original 1k ohm resistor here my original 2k ohm resistor here my original 1k ohm resistor here now when I do this I also need to keep track of the voltages that I'm interested in so the voltage across the 2k ohm resistor across this guy right here is still V1 okay and you can see uh, V1 here has exactly the same location in the second circuit in the orange circuit as it does in the yellow circuit now you'll notice that the voltage across these three resistors from this point to this point is V2 and so the voltage across my equivalent 1k ohm resistor will still be V2 okay now this is actually one of the most important things that you need to do correctly if you want to have this method work is keep track of the voltages in your original circuit as you go through um, equivalent resistor combinations. Now you might be asking, so what happened to V3? Well, V3 has disappeared because V3 is internal to the equivalent resistance that I computed here. So that's why we're going to have to go back to our original circuit to find V3 once we found V1 and V2 okay so now I look at my orange circuit it's uh, lovely but I still can't see any way that I can find V1 or V2 using a simple voltage divider or some other fairly simple technique so what I will do then is do another um, combination of this 2k ohm re whoops yeah this 2k ohm resistor this 1k ohm resistor and this 1k ohm resistor and then um, I'll create the equivalent resistance of these three so again the 1k ohm resistor here and this 1k ohm resistor are in series so their series combination is 2k ohms and that 2k ohms is in parallel with this 2k ohm resistor here so the series combination of 1k ohms in parallel with the 2k ohm resistor gives us an equivalent resistance which I'll draw here of 1k ohm whoops my k and my ohm kinda got connected okay and the rest of the circuit hasn't changed so this is still my original 1k ohm resistor and I still have this voltage V1 across my equivalent 1k ohm resistor which hopefully you can see because V1 is the voltage from here to here and uh, my equivalent resistance goes from here to here okay so now I have Oops, I've also forgotten to write down that this is still a 10 volt source. We haven't messed with the source at all. But now you can see that I have a simple series combination of two resistors, two 1k ohm resistors, that have from here to here 10 volts across them, which means that I can use a voltage divider to find the voltage V1 simply like this V1 is the voltage across the series combination which is 10 volts times the resistance that it's across divided by the sum of the resistances and 
and uh, just to make it clear, uh, this 1k ohm is coming from this resistor here. Okay, so when I do this computation, I get then that V1 is going to be 1k ohm divided by 2k ohms times 10, which will be 5 volts. Okay, so what that tells me is V1 is equal to 5 volts. And so I can now go back to my other circuits and say this is 5 volts. And here, this guy is 5 volts. Because all of the V1s that I've labeled correspond to the same voltage in the circuit. Now that I know the voltage V1 is 5 volts, that is the voltage from here to here is 5 volts, I can see that I have a um, resistor, this guy here, and this other resistor, this guy here, which are in series, and I want to find V2 across that series combination. Now I know that 5 volts is the voltage across uh, that combination, so I can say then that V2 is going to be 5 volts, that's again this voltage here, times 1k ohm over 1k ohm plus 1k ohm. Okay, so I have this 1k ohm and this 1k ohm in my expression, which I can then, again, 1k ohm over 2k ohms is 1 half, so this gives me 2.5 volts. So this tells me then that V2 is 2.5 volts. Okay, so now that I know that V2 is 2.5 volts, I can go back to my original circuit and find V3. And in the same way as we had before, uh, we have a voltage of 2.5 volts um, across a series combination of 1k ohm resistors. So what this means is that V3 is 2.5 volts times 1k ohm over 1 k ohm plus 1 k ohm, which is equal to 1.25 volts. Okay, so now we have the voltages uh, V1, V2, and V3. The thing we don't have yet is the current. We can actually find the current fairly easily. I have to go fast because I'm running out of time, but the current I is the same in all three circuits because I haven't done anything to um, move the current. I haven't done, well, I haven't uh, made any uh, equivalent resistor computations that have swallowed up that current. So I can actually get the current then directly from my green circuit. The current I is going to be the voltage across my resistors, which is 10 volts divided by the equivalent resistance of these guys, which is uh, 1k ohms plus 1k ohms, which is 10 volts divided by 2k ohms, which, after you work it out, is 5 milliamps. Okay. So, what this gives us then is the current that the source has to supply. It also tells us what all the voltages internal to our circuit are. And we did it all without having to use nodal analysis. In fact, we did this by just using equivalent resistances and then a voltage divider. So, hopefully this was informative and thanks for watching.